Hello Tubesters and welcome to another one of Gav's videos. Today we've got a, another review of some more Claymore Castings Knights. Uh, here we go, Claymore Castings. Well, you don't need to know that bit. There you go, and that's from their number 57 pack, which are French or European uh, knights, I believe. Well, I call them knights anyway. <laughs> you know what I know about medieval figures uh, I couldn't put down on the back of a postage stamp. Um, let's have a closer look. I have put a couple of photographs at the end of the video, just in case there's a lot of glare from the, the lights, which there often is. But this is looking actually quite, quite good, actually, for lights. That's a very small uh, mould line that just needs removing. Is it a mould line? Or a little cut? Well, I don't know. Whatever way it'll clean clean off fairly simple. What I keep saying about these, these Claymore casting figures is I love the movement in them. The sculptors have managed to, to get that flowing flowingness through the through the moves, if, if that's even a word. Um, you know, with the different uh, the different clothes just sweeping around as the as the figures turn in melee, having a scrap. The figures again are lovely. Uh, figures, the faces, I should say, are lovely, and they'll come up nice with a paintbrush. You know, they're not all generic. You know, facial features. There's a lot of difference to them. I mean, sometimes, obviously, when you you tucked in your face is tucked inside a helmet and one of these. Um, Hoods that they wear, you know, uh, in this time period, you know, you, you can't always show a lot of facial details off. Uh, mold lines are what I would expect on a metal figure. No huge amount of flash at all. The weapons aren't particularly bent out of shape or anything. They might need a very slight manipulation um, on the bases. The the bases are kept are kept to a minimum, which probably saves metal but it also um, helps you when you come to base really so they they just I haven't done anything to these at all I like to show the figures off in the in the raw again these are ones I've bought myself so well, I don't have any connection with the with the company but again I, I've got to do a load of research the problem is with me I buy these figures and the good thing is when you're buying and then you're trying to sell them on to, to other people is uh, I get the, the chance to paint a lot of different things but the drawback to that is I don't always know the time period or if it's science fiction whatever fantasy you know I like to get things as right as I can so it will now mean me going off and spending a fortune on reference material to, uh, to obviously try and get these right and then of course I have to get that past the wife and explain well <laughs> you know you only bought some books last week for something else you know some type of Napoleonic uniform or colonial uniform and now you're needing something else but uh, I keep saying we've only got to buy them once a bit of uh, flash there that'll mean taking off again your scalpel's your best friend there maybe a slight filing afterwards sometimes I'll buff these figures up well I'm not saying these particular figures but metal figures up with a bit of wire wool as well it just depends I've got the smaller, is it a butler? That small shield? I'm not I'm not 100 percent Again, I've literally never touched a medieval period. I keep looking back into my dim and distant past of painting and I don't remember ever doing any medieval figures. And so we're a country that's covered in castles and I do like to go around a nice castle and I know you know I can I I can pick out pieces of castle and know what they are but when it comes to the actual uh, period itself and I know bits of bits and pieces about the period but but very little and especially when it comes down to what the guys wore again I might just give under there a bit of a smooth down you're always going to get that on a casting a bit of pitting on that under the very you know underneath of the, the figure sometimes you can get away with it if it's not going to need if it's not going to need a, you know, the, uh, somebody's ever going to see it, you can always say, "Well, why bother?" But I do like to try and clean them up in the uh, the hard to see recesses as well, if possible. But again, you can just see the flowing material, you know, with the, uh, the the whole figure flows and it attracts you as a just as a painter. Never mind, you don't have to be a war gamer. Just as a painter, you just get attracted to the figures because you know that they're quality, you know. 
again, you're not going to be able to tell completely, but the face has got some nice eye detail and that in there again. They've left you enough creases that you've got something to work with. Whether you just want to put a wash in, you know, you don't have to go over the top with these figures if you don't want to. If you just want a, a straightforward, you know, figures to put to, on a skirmish game or in a full full scale army, and they'll do you a treat. But the the details there in the faces, if you want to go, you know, further further down the line. And I always think of a figure with a nice face really sells a figure, and I don't mean just commercially, just, just you know, as a, as a, you know, if you're putting them on the tabletop. Yes, I absolutely agree. You put them on a large war gaming table in your club hall or at a demonstration game. Yeah, you aren't going to see them way across the table, particularly. But you know, a lot of people, the argument is you get they're there to play with, uh, game with, not particularly for a close-up photograph. Obviously, the painter in me sees that differently, but I can understand that that point of view. But even still, the details there for you to put in if you if you if you wish to. Again, because it's raw metal, you won't you won't see it massively yet. But if you go onto Claymore Casting's website, which I've shown, and I'll just put their thing up again, they have got some painted examples, and uh, you know, as I say, you'll you'll get the idea. Beautiful figures. So these are my four knights. And we'll just be painting these on to either sell on to a collector or just on the on the general wargaming sales uh, places. And if I enjoy painting them half as much as which I think I will do, I will probably be getting some more. So let's just get that card from the bag again, which I've completely misplaced now. Here we go. Right, there we go. For, should you want to uh, have a look yourself? claymorecastings.co.uk Thanks for stopping by and taking a look guys. I do appreciate your, your interest in these videos and I will catch you very soon on another one. Cheers.